Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Waterloo Wednesday webinar. Today is September 29th, 2021, and over the next six webinars, we are going to be featuring our, featuring our faculties here at the University of Waterloo. And tonight, we are going to start with my personal favorite, maybe Laura's too, because it is our home faculty, the Faculty of Arts, which also includes our School of Accounting and Finance. This evening, we're gonna be chatting with guests and some students from the faculty to let you know more about the programs found within the Faculty of Arts, what it's like to be a student in one of those programs, and why arts at Waterloo. Now, before we begin, just some housekeeping items for you. If you require captions on, uh, please do just select uh, from the menu bar, or the three dots, you can click, click on the CC and the closed captions will come on on your device for you. Also, we are going to be, um, our Q&A is open, so if you have any questions throughout this webinar, you can send them in to us. Uh, it doesn't have to be specifically about Faculty of Arts, but of course, we've got experts here to answer those questions. But any questions for us at Waterloo, you can send those in. And we've got an awesome team of uh, recruitment staff and student ambassadors and admissions staff here to help answer those as we go along. We'll also address some of those more commonly asked questions during our Q&A at the end. And uh, we are recording this webinar. So if you missed anything, uh, you can find the recording. Uh, it'll be up next week on our YouTube channel, Experience Waterloo. And if you're watching the recording, hello. Uh, but also if you think of any questions, you can send them our way, liaison at uwaterloo.ca. My name is Jay and I am, I use the pronouns he and him, and I'm one of the national recruiters here and uh, one of your co-hosts of the Waterloo Wednesdays, hoping to get you the information that you're looking for as you uh, research your universities. I graduated from the Honors Arts and Business program and majored in history. And uh, here with me, as I said, fellow arts grad from the same program, different major, set you up for our, your intro now, Laura. Over to Thanks, you. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, hi, everyone. As you heard, I'm Laura. I am also a national recruiter at the University of Waterloo. I use she, her pronouns, and I graduated from that same program as Jay, Honors Arts and Business, with my major being in French. Um, now, as we get started, I wanted to acknowledge that much, much of the work of the University of Waterloo takes place on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus is situated on the Haldeman Tract, which is the land that was gra granted in legally binding treaty to the Six Nations that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. Waterloo's active work toward reconciliation takes place across our campuses through research, learning, teaching, and community building, and it is centralized within our Indigenous Initiatives Office. As a descendant of settlers who spent most of my life living on the Haldeman Tract, I'd like to acknowledge my place within the history of colonization in Canada and commit to constantly learning, unlearning, and examining my biases as I support the reconciliation efforts that, needs, that need to be done within the university, the region, and Canada. It's mine and Jay's intention to create an environment of inclusivity in this space, and we ask that you also take the time to acknowledge the land that you are located on as well. Now, you might be wondering what we're covering today. So Jay gave you a little bit of a preview at the top of the presentation, but of course, we'll let you know about some of our upcoming events and ways you can connect with us, as well as our story of the week, which is a little bit of a tongue twister this week, if I remember correctly. Uh, we're going to talk arts. So we'll be talking about four different programs, or rather three programs, and our School of Accounting and Finance, where there are several additional programs located. And then we will get into our weekly quiz and hoodie giveaway, as well as the Q&A, where we, where we will be able to answer any questions that you might have. Now, in terms of ways to connect with us, there are lots. We have got campus tours, both virtual and in person, that are available to book. Uh, our on-campus campus, campus on-campus campus tours are starting on, uh, uh, I believe, October 4th, but they are bookable now if you'd like to take a look at those. But we also have some amazing virtual tours of our campus that you can watch from the comfort uh, of your own home and not worry about weather or anything like that. Uh, you can also order brochures for any of our programs, as well as our main Waterloo brochure, which you can see right here. Um, send us any questions to liaison at uwaterloo.ca and check out our Beyond Ideas blog as well as our future students webpage to learn a little bit more. 
Now, Jay, I mentioned that tongue twister for the story of the week. Are you going to be able to say it? I can see you're already <laughs> focusing so hard. Uh, yeah, I'm trying really hard, and it didn't help that you already had a bit of a tongue twister there, yeah. uh, an unexpected <laughs> one. So, yeah, uh, for the story of the week, I thought since we are talking about the Faculty of Arts, why not share a story about a story from the Faculty of Arts? So it seems appropriate to me. Uh, our Department of English boasts an impressive group of published poets and novelists, which is especially great for those of you who are interested in pursuing the creative writing specialization that we have. Uh, next month, a new children's book is being published by Professor Jennifer Harris, and it tells the tale of Ellen Harding Baker, who is an Iowa housewife with a fascination for astronomy, who in 1876 began sewing a quilt that accurately depicted our solar system. And uh, that quilt now hangs at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. Harris's book is called She Stitched the Stars, a story of Ellen Harding Baker's solar system quilt and uh, is a great represent representation of Waterloo Arts. I think I got through that title okay. As a literary historian, Professor Harris discovered there isn't much preserved about Ellen Harding Baker beyond the quilt, and she thought that a children's book that imagines how the quilt was created would inspire creativity and scientific curiosity for the readers. So I thought that was a pretty cool story, and I'm gonna post a link in the, uh, the chat if you are interested in learning more, and uh, as it is a children's book, there's lots of really cool images that go along with it as well. So now turning our attention to, uh, to more about the Faculty of Arts in general, we've got a couple guests joining us today and uh, I'd like to start off uh, learning or meeting Sam, uh, who is going to be telling us about some of our programs. So Sam, thanks for joining us this week. If you'd like to let our audience know a little bit more about you. All right, thanks, Jay. So my name is Sam. I am the recruitment coordinator for the Faculty of Arts and uh, kind of your first point of contact if you're interested in studying in the Faculty of Arts. Um, I also have a Bachelor of Arts and a Master's of Arts in Recreation and Leisure Studies from the University of Waterloo. Um, and when I was a student, I was actively involved as a Don and as a lifeguard. So needless to say, I love to talk to students about Waterloo and I'm so lucky that I get to do it as my job. And we are so glad that you're joining us today, Sam. Thank you for your time. Um, our audience has been waiting to hear more about our faculties and what better way to start than the one Jay and I graduated from. Um, so we're happy to have you with us this evening. Um, so to start off, Sam, could you let us know a little bit more about what is arts exactly? Yeah, that's a good question. So arts is a big umbrella kind of faculty. Um, we house a wide range of programs within the School of Accounting and Finance, our Stratford School of Interaction and Design and Business, um, and then, then the many program offerings we have in our more traditional arts fields like um, the social sciences, humanities, languages, our uh, languages and cultures, um, and our fine and per performing arts. Um, but what brings all these different areas together is that focus on human experience, both by examining it and by a deep commitment to take that knowledge and contribute to a better world. All right, so I think in the next slide here, we're gonna put up uh, a list of our programs, or some of them anyway. Uh, and these are all entry programs within the Faculty of Arts that you can apply to. There are some programs uh, within the School of Accounting and Finance, which we will get to in the second half of this webinar. But uh, Sam, would you be able to, to let us know a little bit more about these programs? Yes, absolutely. So I'm gonna quickly cover some information on Global Business or Digital Arts or GBDA, Honors Arts, Arts and Business, and Social Development Studies um, to start with. And then I'll pass it over to Kelly to talk about the School of Accounting and Finance for you. So, um, there are 29 majors available in both Honors Arts and Honors Arts in Business um, that you can study. And the great thing about these majors is, and these programs is that under both Honors Arts and Honors Arts in Business, um, you can choose to do the regular or the co-op stream of study. So there's lots and lots of flexibility there. Um, I will mention that Social Development Studies is our one major that you can apply to as a direct entry program on OUAC. Um, as a direct entry program, this program is regular only, so co-op is not an option. And the reason many students might want to do this is they might be interested in fast-tracking to apply to our Bachelor of Social Work degree, um, which you can apply to with a three-year degree. If that's something you're interested in, uh, you can email me and we can chat later. 
Um, but we're really going to focus on honors nerds and arts and business here. So um, lots of flexibility within our programs. And I do always like to mention that even though you're applying to honors arts and arts and business um, on your OUAC application, it is by no means a general first year. You're going to start taking courses in your major area of interest um, as early as your first year. Um, and in fact, our advisors actually recommend that you're going to um, explore two majors in your first year. So that brings me to one of the things that I actually love most about this program, and that's the flexibility. You might not know right now exactly which major you want to do. And we, in fact, know that um, coming to university, you may be um, exposed to a lot of different areas of study that you weren't able to be in high school. So it's OK if you're going to change your major during first year. So and when I say flexible as well, Right now, really, the only decision you need to make is, are you going to apply to Honors Arts and Arts Business? Or maybe you're applying to both if you're interested in both. Um, you're going to tell us what your favorite major is on OUAC or what you think your favorite major area of interest is. But if you want to change your mind when by the time you do course selection in June, that's absolutely OK. So say you say political science on OUAC and later on you decide um, that you want to be a legal studies major, you just need to let your advisor know when you do co-op selection. So there's a lot of flexibility even between uh, when you submit your application um, and when you do course selection. So the flexibility of our degrees and the ability to build the degree that works for you is really, really um, a pro of the program. And then one last thing I want to touch on before I pass it on to one of our current students is um, that if you're even the tiniest bit thinking about um, doing co-op, I always recommend uh, that you say yes to co-op on OUAC, and that's because co-op for these programs doesn't start until second year, so it's really easy to drop co-op during first year, but not as easy to add it in. And from there, I'm actually going to introduce you to current student Arian, who is majoring in economics right now, but he's going to touch a little bit on how he's actually switched majors since he started at Waterloo, some of his co-op experiences, as well as um, extracurricular activities on campus. Thank you, Sam, for that intro. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Arun Narang. I'm an international student from India, and I'm in my 3B, um, majoring in economics and business and minoring in international relations. And as Sam mentioned, the flexibility that Waterloo offers with just switching majors. I was that student who applied as a political science major, but after taking a couple of arts first year courses and a couple of economics courses during my first year, I realized economics was my go to. So I made a switch in my second year and it has been a great, a great and a smooth experience for me. Um, as per uh, as per as per co-op, I have completed three co-ops. I have worked with a couple of good companies mentioning as uh, OLG, the Ontario Lottery and Gaming Corporation as a cloud operations analyst at Loblaws um, as a master data analyst. And uh, recently I was working at Sun Life Financials as a business analyst. And I am currently applying for uh, my co-op for the winter and spring term. Uh, being an international student, I didn't have that much of, you know, Canadian work experience. So for me, getting involved within the university in my first year was my go to. So I uh, started being a member of a lot of clubs like the Political Science Student Association. Um, as the vice president, I also work as the arts ambassador for the Faculty of Arts and a student counselor for the Waterloo Undergrad Student Association. And um, I feel like Waterloo offers a great student and education work balance, which allows me to explore a lot of new things. Um, and uh, I'm very confident to say that being uh, being committed into the university and working with a lot of students helped me secure my first co-op and till date is helping me um, going to go, okay, go ahead with a lot of other jobs. And yeah, that is how I wrap it up and Sam, I'm going to pass it back to you. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Ariane. Um, so next, we're going to talk a little bit about the Global Business and Digital Arts program. And um, this program is a little bit different than the ones I talked about in the fact that um, it does have a pretty set degree requirement. So in this program, you don't even have enough uh, requirements to actually do a minor. You have six electives, so it's pretty set out, but um, it is a very specified program in that it is um, one of the first programs in Canada be based on the digital media pillars of creativity, technology and business. So this degree focuses on a wide range of skills in the digital industry. 
Um, and so this program is a co-op only program. So um, if you're going to be a part of the Global Business and Digital Arts program, co-op is going to be a part of your degree. You're going to complete uh, four co-op work terms. Um, and starting in second year, our students study out at our Stratford campus. And Stratford is about a 40 minute drive from Waterloo. So in first year, you're going to be taking all of your courses um, on main campus, except uh, in the winter term, you'll take uh, one out at the Stratford campus to start getting you used to that. And we will provide a bus for that. And then after that, most of your GBDA courses are going to be located out at the Stratford campus. Only if you're choosing to take an elective um, that's on main campus, would you be studying at main campus? And so I'm actually going to pass you over to someone who has more experience with being out in Stratford, um, current student Alyssa, to talk about her experiences in the program and studying at our Stratford campus. Hi, so yeah, I'm Alyssa. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I am in my third year of global business and digital arts, which is super exciting and kind of nerve wracking. Um, my favorite part about being at the Stratford campus is how there's a huge wall of glass at the very front of the building, which allows a lot of natural light in. I find that it really helps me stay productive and like I study really, really well, um, which is even better during winter when it gets really dark. Um, so I get to make the most out of my hours there. Um, it also is really great because it has these project rooms that we can go in either just by ourselves or with other people and it allows us to have a little bit more of a quiet space. So I used that a whole bunch when I was in my first year um, during our classes that we got the bus out to Stratford for. So that was also really awesome. And they also have a digital media services which is in the Stratford campus where you can take out cameras and lights and that's really, really awesome. Um, I highly recommend taking as much stuff out of there as you can. Um, and then for me as well, and what I've done in the program is I've um, completed a uh, project last term, which was called Brainiac in my UX um, group. And in that we created a project that allowed us to collaborate more effectively online together. Um, because we found that with the pandemic, we're on all of these different platforms. Like right now we're using Teams, but we could also be using Zoom and we could have a calendar and Microsoft Word and like all these different things. And then we all have to make sure that they're all up to date when we're trying to collaborate online effectively. So we ended up making a project to fix that problem by putting it all together on one and putting it on web um, and then pitching it at the end of the term. So that was really fun and I really enjoyed getting to do that. That's all for me. All right, thank you so much, Sam, Aryan, and Alyssa. It was great to, to hear from you and especially to hear about some of the things that uh, you're working on as students at Waterloo. I know our audience who tunes in regularly loves to hear from current students, so appreciate that. Um, and uh, we're going to learn more about our other programs within arts now, and those are the ones under our School of Accounting and Finance. And so for that, I'd like to welcome Kelly, if you'd like to say hi, Kelly. Hi, hi everyone. My name is Kelly Miller. I'm the recruitment coordinator for the School of Accounting and Finance. So basically it's my job to give you all the information you could ever need or want to decide if one of our programs is the right fit for you. And thanks for joining us as well this week, Kelly. And uh, as you work in the School of Accounting and Finance and represent those programs, uh, could you let us know a little bit more about uh, SAF as I'm sure there's going to be lots of acronyms used in this next little bit, uh, but SAF, the School of Accounting and Finance and what's in included there. Yeah, of course. So within the SAF, we have five programs that students can apply to directly. So those are our Accounting and Financial Management Program or AFM, Biotechnology slash her professional accountancy or biotech CPA. We also have computing and financial management or CFM, mathematics slash her professional accountancy or math CPA. And we also have sustainability and financial management or SFM, which is the only program of its kind in Canada and it's brand spanking new. So we're so excited about that. Now, all these programs are direct entry and co-op only, which means that you will automatically start co-op in year one if you're in CFM and year two if you're in AFM, SFM, Biotech CPA or Math CPA. All right, so lots to choose from to start off. Um, but Kelly, I'm wondering for students, once they go into the program, are they making any decisions or learning more about how they can shape or customize their program during their first year? 
Yeah, so the great thing about AFM and SFM is that you're really going to specialize in standing out and you'll do this through customizing your degree and following your passion in years three and four. So in AFM, you'll receive 13 electives and out of those 13 electives, you must choose at least one or two career specializations, which are the professional accountant specialization, which fulfills the requirements for CPA designation, entrepreneurial mindset, which prepares you to think from a new venture perspective, we also have financial leaderships that help you build negotiation and leadership skills for the C-suite. Financial markets, which supports you in attaining the CFA designation. We also have business analytics that equips you to manage, forecast, test, and optimize data and decision and policy making. And we also have the sustainability specialization that builds your knowledge in capital markets, government policy, and corporate sustainability. Now, if you decide to only complete one specialization, you can use your remaining electives to take something like a minor or simply take courses that interest you at Waterloo. Now for SFM, you must choose one of two career specializations. So you can choose to complete either the corporate sustainability specialization if you wanna pursue a CPA designation or government, government policy and financial markets if you want to work towards a CFA designation. Now, even though you don't have to decide which specialization you want to do or complete until closer to the end of year two, we are going to have you thinking about your options and your career pathway starting in year one. And we'll do this through things like conferences, crew casts, and even through co and extracurricular activities, which will help you narrow in on your passion and interests. All right, so expanding a little bit uh, maybe on those extracurriculars um, and thinking about other ways that students are learning, not just in the classroom, uh, but uh, those hands-on learning opportunities that are built into programs. It's something that Waterloo is definitely known for. Can you talk about uh, ways that's integrated into our SAF programs? Yeah, so like you heard me say before, 100% of SAF students are in co-op and for good reason. I mean, while coursework builds your knowledge, nothing, absolutely nothing accelerates your professional development like real world experience. And that's why our students complete 16 to 24 months of co-op work experience and earn between 34 and $81,000 plus during co-op. On top of that, we know that success as a future ANF professional requires much more than just technical skills. That's why we tell our students to step up to skill up by building strong analytical and people skills, teamwork, relationship building, communication. This is all done through tutorials, workshops, conferences, and competitions. Now, I could sit here and tell you about all the amazing co and extracurricular activities that you can get involved in, or you can hear it from someone who's living it right now. So on that note, I would love to introduce to you Darshan, who's an upper year AFM student and is someone who truly understands that through experiential learning in and outside of the classroom, he'll be able to accelerate his knowledge and learn how to adapt to a future of disruption. Darshan. Hello everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Kelly. My name is Darshan Saraf and I'm a 4A student in AFM. Um, starting with co-op, I've completed two terms, which is equivalent to eight months at BDO Canada in their audit and assurance division. And I'll be returning in January and starting forensic accounting in the summer with BDO. Uh, through co-op, I've been able to apply concepts that I've learning in the classroom and see the problems that I solved in the textbooks in real life. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to be, to be exposed to the entire accounting cycle from discussing risks and determining issues to testing and finally reporting the results of the audit. At the same time, like a textbook or practice problems, I've been scheduled on a very diverse set of clients ranging from telecommunication companies uh, to insurance to law firms. And this has truly helped set up a foundation of experience that I hope to build upon. Um, over the eight months, it's been a very rewarding experience in the sense that I was part of a team. For my first audit handling three to four sections of a financial statement and my latest file was a solo effort um, handling a fund. So that full circle is, is quite fulfilling and motivating and informs what we students are learning in the classroom. In terms of extracurricular clubs, uh, in high school, I was uh, had the privilege of being involved in multiple committees and clubs like Student Council and DECA, many, many of which our students that are listening in or watching have been involved in uh, or are. In university, I pursued committees like uh, AFAO, Accounting and Finance Orientation Week Committee. Um, and in, in, I've been fortunate enough to complete three years, ending my co-chair tenure uh, a week ago. Uh, and I also pursued outreach ambassador roles, and I'm currently serving as a peer support coach for first years. 
so I guess as a trend with my activities, um, I've been very fortunate enough to get support from upper years. This is something we see uh, on campus and in the community. And I guess I just want to help make a difference uh, with other students that are incoming. Through this process, students are able to make connections uh, through their extracurriculars and, and their activities and in the classroom and outside, and then leverage them um, as they grow and succeed. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. It sounds like you've got some ex impressive experience already, Darshan. Um, so you talked a little bit about student life and ways you've been involved already, but just wondering whether there's anything you'd like to add in terms of describing student life overall within the School of Accounting and Finance and, and some other ways that students are getting involved outside of the classroom. Sure. Um, well, regardless of the, the program or pathway um, or future goals, the SAF community is closely linked due to the extracurricular experiences um, and opportunities that we provide and have. Uh, as students, we can get involved in numerous clubs, uh, clubs that change the lives of current students uh, within the SAF community, as well as individuals outside the uh, University of Waterloo committee, uh, community. So the involvement not only uh, helps develop the appropriate skills and, and qualities that students can use in the classroom and co-op, but also instills a certain level of ownership and, and community. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, Kelly, I'm gonna send a, a question back your way now. Uh, so with all that mix of co-op experience and other hands-on learning experiences, and uh, obviously that high quality education that our students are getting from the classroom, we know that SAF grads or School of Accounting and Finance grads are found all over the place in a multitude of different industries. Uh, so what are your students doing or what do they tend to do after they graduate? So the great thing about ANF professionals is that they're in demand worldwide in every industry, every business, governments, not-for-profits, you name it, you're needed, even entrepreneurs. I mean, think about it, to have a background in accounting and finance means you're setting your business up for success because you'll be in the unique position to develop the financial models and projections that investors are looking for. Plus, as an SAF grad, you'll have the ability to solve complex problems to maintain business success. You'll be able to select, analyze, and effectively interpret data to continuously innovate. And you'll know how technology impacts business to successfully leverage it. That's why our grads do exceedingly well. Take Adnan, who graduated from our Master of Accounting program in 2017. Now, Adnan is a superhero driving positive change for education and the gender employment gap through his organization, Educate Canada and Viva. Educate distributes tablets um, preloaded with educational content in Latin America, and Viva provides employment opportunities to women in emerging economies. Now, Meng graduated from AFM in 2012 and is no stranger to um, creating a positive global impact. She was actually part of the team or part of the team that launched Uber Eats um, back in 2015 when it launched worldwide. Now, as you may know, Uber Eats um, is used in more than 500 cities worldwide and was instrumental in supporting thousands, and I mean thousands of restaurants through the COVID-19 pandemic. We also have Pamela Steer, a Mac 94, who was just named Canada's CFO of the year in 2020. We have Sarah, who graduated from AFM in 2018 and is now the founder of Bluish. And you probably saw Sarah on Dragon's Den, where she pitched her idea for Bluish and ended up uh, striking a deal with Arlene Dickinson. We have Anu, Jacqueline, and Jasper, who all graduated together from EMAC in 2019 and have since launched a successful new venture called Anvision, which helps students like yourself prepare for university by brainstorming, structuring, and developing free educational programs specific for high school students. And we have Sheikha, who graduated from EMAC in 2004. And now she is the Vice President of Finance and Corporate Services at Purelator. Now, if that's not enough, enough to entice, you can always head over to our social media sites where we just posted a story from the Global Mail about nine of our SAF alums who are leading several of Canada's top growing companies this year in 2021. Now, here's the thing. In the end, the only limit placed on your success really is the limit that you place on yourself. So you truly can influence organizations and improve global economies as an SAF grad because you'll be able to think and see the world differently. 
Amazing. So cool to hear these stories of, of how much our grads are accomplishing and in, in so many unique roles related to accounting and finance. So thank you for those examples, Kelly. Um, so next question I have for you is maybe sounds like a simple question, but I, I know it can have a, a lot packed into it. And that is why Waterloo? Why should a student be considering Waterloo when it comes to the School of Accounting and Finance programs? And uh, I think Darshan, we'll go to you first for this one and then hear from Kelly. Sure, um, well, students should consider Waterloo for a variety of reasons. The two most important ones being pathways and co-op. Uh, in terms of pathways, many students in high school have a clear um, idea regarding what they want to do six, seven years ahead. Uh, and many students don't. They still don't have a particular choice in terms of uh, a field. The SAP program is perfect for both because the school offers specializations that students can pursue from the get-go. Uh, and the school also offers a variety of courses uh, for students to understand their passions so that they can then test those passions during a co-op term. With a unique program that offers co-op, students will not only be able to test and try and consider the fields that they may be interested in, but also kickstart their careers in undergrad. Whether it's working in the same company and gaining more and more responsibility or trying different positions at different workplaces, students come out with transferable skills and transferable experiences that they can apply anywhere. Um, and finally, we all know that uh, NYC is a city that never sleeps, but I can say that Waterloo is a version of that. With three schools in the area, the, the area is full of students, the community, the study spots, the food places, um, and it's quite lively. It's really great. It's really great being a part of a community like that. And Kelly, over to you for the same question. Why should students consider Waterloo for accounting and finance? Uh, so I think I basically touched on it through the presentation, but to sum it up, within SAF, you'll study at the intersections of accounting, finance, business, sustainability, and even technology while immersing yourself in diverse topics that really give you the flexibility to design your unique pathway. You'll also dive into collaborative, problem-based courses and then apply your learning to the real world through things like co-op work terms and co-op extracurricular experiences and by cultivating an entrepreneurial mindset and gaining leading edge financial expertise, you'll be ready to impact global economies with new perspectives and solutions. And lastly, you'll have the knowledge to adapt to a future disruption, which is going to be so crucial for future students. All right, thank you, Kelly, and thank you, Darshan. And uh, that's kind of our overview of the Faculty of Arts and the programs that we offer so uh, we're going to get into our quiz in just a moment and uh, then we'll open up to the q a and address some of the frequently asked questions that our audience has but before we get there uh, i'm going to put it back to our students who are joining us today and uh, we kind of do this with all of our special guests every time we do one of these webinars we give you the opportunity to share any tips or advice you have for our prospective student listeners so whether that is specific to the faculty of arts in waterloo or choosing university in general. So uh, let me maybe go in order that we met you today. So uh, Ariane, do you wanna start off? Uh, any tips or advice for uh, students looking into university in Waterloo? Yeah, for sure. Um, first of all, as throughout the presentation, we've mentioned a, a couple of times is to explore the options with the flexibility that the University of Waterloo offers, and especially um, under the Faculty of Arts. Um, as I mentioned, um, I was, I started as a student who wanted to get into uh, public relations and work as a uh, and work under political science, but switched into completely into a completely different field of economics and specializing in finance. Um, so it comes down to what we like, and I feel like the first year in the University of Waterloo offers you to kind of explore what you, uh, what you want. I had taken a couple of legal study courses, a couple of English courses, just to see how I feel about it. So uh, my first step would be to 100% explore whatever we like and not to just stick to one thing that we've um, always thought about through our, throughout our high school. We, we never know, we might not like it when we enter the university. And uh, my second tip and advice would, uh, and it tells into why Waterloo, uh, being an international student, I always had the fear of, oh, would I be able to gel in such a university uh, environment when I don't know anyone? Uh, but with this, with seeing the amount of um, international population that University of Waterloo has, with the peer support, dons in every residences, uh, mental health services, I always felt like being at a place 
uh, which I can call as home, even after being away from home. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of uh, put a spotlight to that. That's great to hear. And I'm glad you've had that experience and felt that support. Uh, Alyssa, what about you? Uh, tips and advice for, for our uh, future students? Yeah, for sure. So I would definitely also suggest like totally getting into all of those clubs. You can even start now in your high schools. Like you don't have to wait for university to come and hit you in order to start doing those things that you think only the big kids can do, right? You can start doing anything now. You can make an impact on the world right now. So go out there and try whatever you can do. And trust me, that'll just make things so much better for you, especially because then you might stumble upon something that you wouldn't have even thought you would have been interested in. And then it turns out, oh, you are. Um, and something that you might not even take as like a second perspective major. Um, same thing goes for once you do enter university is go to those clubs, sit and study when you're at campus like study on campus don't just hide in your room when you study because then there'll be different people walking by you'll just get a feel for what's going on um so i would say just immerse yourself in everything and you'll get to try the whole entire world and that'll help you know exactly what you want to do yeah again great advice this is going to university is for um and finally darshan what uh what advice do you have for our future students as my peers mentioned, my advice for any student is to open the mind to what the possibilities are. Um, use the connections that we have at SAF um, that we really push and really build on those transferable skills, communication, leadership, initiative, time management. We've all heard um, these words, but I think that those skills can really help transition a student into the program and to help succeed uh, in the program as well. So retaining and applying the knowledge gained here at SAF and into the workplace, those skills really do help. Um, and finally, I think more importantly, don't be afraid to leverage the resources that are available to you. Professors, instructors, uh, upper year students and administration, they're all here to help you in your in your experience. Uh, so use them. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much um, to to Kelly and Sam, as well as Arian, Darshan and Alyssa. We appreciate all of your perspectives and experience. Uh, and audience, don't worry, they will be sticking around. So if you have questions for any of our students or Kelly or Sam, please feel free to um, uh, direct your message to them in the Q&A. You can call them out by name if you'd like to, because we can bring those questions to them when we do our live Q&A in just a few moments. But first, of course, we've got a very exciting part of the webinar, and that is our weekly quiz. Uh, so we are giving out Waterloo Warriors hoodie this week to um, the individual who can answer our three questions correctly and quickly. So first person to get in correct answers to all three questions um, will win that Warriors hoodie. Uh, a couple of reminders, we have to share these reminders every week because we do have some students who miss them every week. Uh, first of all, you should send in all of your responses along with your email in one Q&A message. So put this all in one line and then hit send. If you send it in as individual responses, we won't be able to see which answers go together. So make sure that you're including your email. You can include your first name if you'd like to, as well as responses to all three questions in one line before hitting send. So with that as the really the only rule, uh, let's share some quiz questions. Uh, and we've got a lot of naming this week. So first of all, can you Name one program in the Faculty of Arts that does not result in a BA. If I have my counting correct, I believe there are six of them. Uh, and we are going to, uh, yeah, we can, we'll accept any of those six uh, responses. So one program that does not result in a BA. Second question, one major available in Honors Arts or Honors Arts and Business? Last I counted, we had 24. 24 majors in honors arts or honors arts and business. Sam can confirm, but we just need you to name one of them. You can totally do that. Uh, finally, third question, name one faculty of arts program that offers co-op. We talked a lot of, about a lot of programs today. Which program offers co-op? Again, there's a few different responses to this one. So um, we'll accept a, a variety of different answers for that. All right, as we wait for our responses to come in, I guess I could tell you the answers. Uh, one program in the Faculty of Arts that does not result in a BA. 
So first of all, we have our Global Business and Digital Arts program, which gives a BGBDA, which Alyssa, that must be fun to say, right? Um, then we've got in our School of Accounting, Finance, Accounting and Finance, um, five different programs. So Accounting and Financial Management is a BAFM. Sustainability and Financial Management is a BSFM. Uh, math CPA is a BMath. Uh, biotech CPA is a bachelor or BSc, a Bachelor of Science. And what's the one? Oh, Computing and Financial Management is a BCFM. So those ones are all pretty straightforward. Oh, I feel like I just did the quiz myself. Stressful. Um, so any of those are correct answers. And then one Faculty of Arts program that offers co-op, you can indicate any program that we, uh, that we mentioned today because one way or another, you can do co-op with any of our majors or any of our um, entry program. So uh, it looks like we have a winner. So it looks like uh, Amit sent in accounting and finance as the program that doesn't result in a BA. Uh, one major available is, uh, oh, not quite digital art and business was the response. So not quite correct, but uh, there were 24 other majors. So it's okay. We already said your name, so we'll give you the prize all the same. And uh, a faculty of arts program that offers co-op is any of the programs in our school of accounting and finance. Uh, so there we go. So we will follow up with our winner to let them know how they can share their information with us so we can send them their Waterloo Warriors hoodie. Jay, have you got some questions for the quiz? For the or quiz? For the Q&A, <laughs> we're done the quiz. I, yeah, I'm questions. still trying to, to get through the quiz yeah. myself. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's go with some questions here. So Sam, I'm actually going to send the first question to you. Um, a question we get quite a bit right now from students, especially the ones that are doing their research. They uh, haven't quite narrowed down their list yet, which is great. But if a student is interested in maybe multiple programs, um, so I'm thinking even outside of the Faculty of Arts maybe, is it common that you see arts students uh, doing things like double major or minoring, whether it's within other arts programs or um, from other areas of campus? Yeah, that's a really great question, Jay. Um, and that is fairly uh, program specific, but with the flexibility that we offer, um, you are able to go out to different faculties. So a really um, popular minor would be a biology minor from the Faculty of Science. Um, uh, in certain areas, so on, in Honors Arts, you can easily do a double major within the Faculty of Arts. In Arts and Business, doing a major and a minor is um, much more realistic. Just with the business courses that you're taking, you don't really have enough courses to do a double major. But that being said, if you want to study for more than four or five years on campus, we'll let you stay. So if you want to do a joint, well, it's actually called a joint honors. So say you want to do a joint honors and you want to get a BA, but you want your major um, in biology, you're allowed to do that. So if you want to stay on campus and study, it just depends on how many years you want to stay and study. So if you're thinking about one of those combinations, um, please reach out to me I'm at arts at uwaterloo.ca because it's very program specific. So as an example, you can't go and do um, a double major with uh, ASM um, and you can't go and take engineering's courses. So there are limitations, but there's also many, many different options that you can do. And Sam, I'm going to send another one to you. I uh, just had a question come in uh, asking if you could talk a little bit more about our fine arts and psychology programs. Oh, those are two very different programs, but two very popular ones. Um, so let's start with psychology. I One thing I know that our students' favorite parts about psychology is their ability to um, get involved in research as early as their uh, first and second years. So our professors and our students um, uh, uh, work together and basically what students do is they reach out to professors and our master's students who are doing research and, and say, hey, I'd love to get involved with this project with you. It really, really interests me. Um, and in first year a psychology student, you're really going to look at all of the different areas of psychology and then there through your course selection as you get into second, third and fourth year, you're going to specialize in the area that interests you most. So that's going to open a lot of different doors for you. And then the thing I have to say about fine arts, um, 
is that when our students come and visit our studios, their eyes just light up. We have everything from sculpting studios to spray painting booths um, to a printmaking studio where you can actually print your own t-shirts. A lot of our t-shirts that we hand out are printed right in that studio. Um, so really small class sizes. And one of my favorite things too is for fine arts students is um, that fine arts building that hosts all of our studios. You have 24 hour access. So we know that some people work better at night. So if you're inspired late at night and want to go and work on one of your projects, um, you're able to get into that building and go and uh, work whenever works well for you. So both really, really great um, opportunities and majors to explore. Yeah, I had some roommates who were fine arts majors at, uh, at Waterloo and I loved going to visit them in the studio. It was so cool to see their space and the projects that they were working on and all that stuff. Plus our house always looked amazing because their art was up on our wall. So um, one thing I wanted to mention to attendees today is that we are having some technical difficulties with Microsoft Teams. Um, so if you have submitted questions and you're not seeing responses to them, I believe we have responded to most of the questions. So if you close the um, live event Q&A tab and then reopen it, it should hopefully um, display your questions, but if they are rather display the responses to your questions, but if they still aren't there, um, and you don't get an answer to your question by the end of this session, um, email us to liaison at uwaterloo.ca that you can see up on your screen here. You can just copy and paste your question into an email and send it over to us and we'll make sure that we that we get an answer to you. So apologies, we are doing our best to answer all of the questions. It's just that we're kind of seeing that maybe the responses aren't getting through to everyone. Um, Kelly, we have a question that it would be great to uh, have you answer about the uh, future of our School of Accounting and Finance programs. One student is wondering whether there is an option to study abroad for any of the SAF programs, and if so, which ones? So within AFM, you do have the flexibility to do that. That's not something that a lot of our students do. They're kind of few and far between, but I do know of at least one who did it and he had a fantastic experience. Um, but we also have something called the International Study Course, which is fantastic. And Darchin, were you involved in that course by chance? I unfortunately wasn't, but I have friends that have taken the course and have traveled the world and, and I hear the stories. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fantastic course. So basically you get to learn about global issues when it comes to business and you get the chance to actually um, go to different places. Like we've had students go to Germany or New York or, you know, just far off places and it's really cool. And they get to meet all these global business leaders and hear about all the different issues that are going on um, and they fully take care of everything. So they have to plan and organize the entire trip and they get evaluated on that and they get um, they get a grade for this as well. So that's a really great experience too. If you didn't want to do a full study abroad, you can do the international study course. That's a, a great piece to add to your, uh, sorry, Laura, I think I may have stolen your, That's okay. your piece there, but a great way to internationalize your degree, um, not only through co-op as one possibility, but yeah, through this course and through different study abroads and exchanges uh, with partnerships that the University of Waterloo has with universities all over the world. And that also, of course, applies to our programs or other programs in the Faculty of Arts uh, with Honors Arts. Uh, honors arts and business and definitely with our global business and di uh, digital arts program too. Um, many, many students in that program do take the opportunity to do an exchange. Uh, I have a question now for our three students. So I think we'll go in order again that uh, that you spoke earlier. So Ariane, we're going to start with you. Uh, but for students wondering like what is class actually like at um, at university, I know especially within the Faculty of Arts with so many different majors, there's different styles and, and ways of learning. but um, could you give us a little bit of insight of what that is like? Is it all sitting in a in a lecture hall with somebody speaking to you? Is there group work? Uh, how would you describe that classroom experience? And uh, yeah, Aryan, we'll, we'll start off with you. Yeah, for sure. So um, the first thing that pops into my mind is all the business courses that we take um, under Honors Arts and Business um, involves a lot of group work, a lot of group activities um, having around four to ten members working on a business project. Recently I was taking one of the um, Arbus courses and uh, the whole idea was to kind of make a company and pitch the idea to the professor and get grades out of that and we were a team of six and it was a lot of fun even though even though um, it was all online for us but the tools that the university offered helped, uh, helped us have a smooth transition into um, getting a 90 on that <laughs> on 90 on that course. 
but uh, traditionally speaking, uh, for me, uh, who's majoring in economics, uh, the class sizes um, around uh, 30 to 50 students for third year courses, um, which uh, which which allows us to, you know, at the same uh, be in a classroom where the professor is giving out a lecture, but at the same time ask questions without getting interrupted in between. Um, the one thing that I need to mention is um, a current course that I'm taking is game theory uh, in one of my economics major, and it's an in-person class and the amount of interactions that we have over there and uh, the group work over there is really amazing. So for me, um, I'm the kind of person who always prefers an in-person class rather than an online, and for me, the experience has been great. Yeah, that's good to hear. And we know that the number of students in the class can certainly range depending on the year and the type of class that it is too. Um, Alyssa, what about in uh, GBDA? What uh, I, th I think it's a lot of collaborative workloads uh, there with students. Is that right? Yeah, that's mainly right. Um, I would say that a lot of that happens even more so once you get into second year and above. In first year, you get a really good sense of a whole bunch of different types of classes. So I had um, my language courses were in major lecture halls um, where I would have like the 300 seat kind of, you know, that stuff going on. Um, but then I would have my second part of that class where it would be way more niche and we would each individually know the professor. So that was really interesting how that singular course had both in it um, but then I also took um, the arts 130 arts 140 which is the arts first courses and they had very small class sizes I think they get capped at like 30 but I think a lot of mine were smaller than that um, and so you really get to know your um, classmates along with the professor which I thought was really really awesome um, and then for the most part for GBDA courses after that it is a lot of group work um, and you still have a smaller class size but it's not as small as your arts first courses so I think you can have classes that are capped at 50 or 60 um, so you can still get to know people but there's a chance that you won't know every single person who's in the room um, yeah, so it's a it's a good mix when that happens of lecture and then having time for group work in the same um, time slot that you have. Yeah, it's good. Nice to have that balance and a, a little bit of both. And Darshan, what about uh, you in accounting and financial management? Just sitting in a in a classroom being lectured to, or what's your experience been like? When it comes to learning, I think it's a bit of both. Uh, I've been in classes where there are around 370 students in a lecture hall and the professor is is speaking. I've also been in classes with about 15, 16 people and it's more of a conversation with whoever is teaching. Um, but when it comes to assessments, I think now in the past year we've seen with virtual learning, a lot of the assessments are group work, they're case studies. It ties back to experiential learning. We have problems, we have to go through a situation and we're working with with other people and other students. So that can be someone from the area, it can be someone from around the world uh, and dealing with um, the ups and downs, the challenges of, of that really changed our, ex our experience. So I've had experience with both in classroom, sitting down, taking notes and also engaging in uh, discussion. All right, so I've got a question that I'd like to send over to Kelly. Um, I think we've got at least one student attending today who's interested in uh, accounting and financial management. So wondering if you could talk a little bit about that admissions process, because I know it is a unique one. Yeah, um, actually the admission process for AFM and SFM are now exactly the same. So you need sixth grade 12 year M level courses, including your English advanced functions, calculus and vectors, all minimum 75% is required and an overall average of mid 80s. Now the other part of this is that for both AFM and SFM, you have to complete the AFMA. Now the AFMA is a two step process that is done online. The first part is an online interview. Uh, you will do this through a platform called Cura Talent, and you'll have about a minute and a half to respond to the pre-recorded questions. And you can do this from the comfort of your own home, which is really nice. You will actually have access to the questions ahead of time, so you can just practice as much as you want. Um, and then when you're ready to go, you just click a button and then it will record you. Uh, the second part of the AFMA is something called a trace assessment, which you will respond to 78 questions and they're all done on a sliding scale. So how would you rate your leadership skills on a scale of one to 10? So there's nothing that you can do to prepare for the trade assessments. It's just go with your gut feeling. 
Um, they say the best response is always your first one. And don't try to play the system by any means. Don't give yourself tens across the board because that is not going to go well uh, <laughs> at all. Um, so just be very honest in your responses. Overall, it should probably only take you about a half hour to complete the entire ATHMA. We're not trying to trick you in any way. You don't need a background in business, accounting, finance. Um, these are all simple questions that anybody can respond to. Um, and that's about it. Um, if you want to find out more information about the ATHMA, you can always go to our website. We have a whole list there of tips and advice on how to complete it, um, tips on how to set up your computer. I will say when it comes to the online interview, um, I always suggest that prospective students consider it as like a co-op interview or a job interview. So please dress up at least from the waist up, look professional. If you want to wear your PJs, that's fine. Just make sure we can't see it. Um, and it's always good to let your family know when you plan on actually completing the ATHMA. Put it a note on your door, put it on the calendar. That way you won't have mom barging in vacuuming or you won't have like your little brother screaming in the background because you really want the um, the markers, the evaluators to hear every single word that you're saying and also make sure that your passion and your enthusiasm is coming through in your answers and make sure you're actually answering the question that's being asked. And that's why it's so important to practice as well, um, just to make sure that you are speaking in a nice, clear, concise message um, and that you are getting the correct messaging out there that you that you want. So those are the, the simple tips and advice that I give to students wanting to do the ATHMA. Um, when it comes to the APE, it's no longer required for us. In the past, it had been required. Now we're just recommending it. Um, and we just suggest for there, I always suggest that you kind of make a laundry list of everything that you've done, put it into different categories and perhaps pick the top one or two from each of those categories and put it on the APE because that gives us a nice idea of um, of what you've done in your extracurriculars and stuff like that. And we'll, it'll really showcase that you're a well-rounded individual. Great advice, Kelly, not just for the AFMA, but uh, for Waterloo Wednesdays as well. Laura, we'll keep that in mind. Always make sure we've got the right clothing on and hopefully we don't match uh, when we show up for these. All right, I think we've got one more question and Sam, I'm going to send it to you. Um, a student asking a question that was certainly going through my mind when I applied to arts and business, ask any of my high school teachers, they'll let you know math was certainly not my best subject, uh, nor my second, third or fourth. Um, but I still came into arts and business and did well. So for students who are maybe wondering that math or business courses, but they're still interested in the arts and business program, um, should they be working on that or what, what advice do you have for them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so arts and business is a pretty unique program to Waterloo. And what it does is you're going to uh, pick from our 29 majors and so you're combining your major with core business skills. So I always say that um, in terms of business skills, you're, you're kind of touching on the, the tip of the iceberg for each of them. And what that does for employers is that creates um, alumni or graduates who have a really great in-depth knowledge of their area of area of study, whether that be um, politics in business or they're very creative, they understand marketing well, but they are also going to understand um, how how business operations and organizations operate and that's really attractive to employers. So if you're not super strong in math and accounting, um, that's okay. You, you may find that our one course accounting information for managers a little bit difficult, but that's one of the programs, uh, the courses that we typically have tutoring for. So you'll be able to get through it and still be successful like Jay said. Um, so I think it's a really good, great fit for students who want a little bit of that business knowledge and really want to study their passion. Um, it's a great option and uh, it's also not re uh, required to get in. So you do not need an accounting course in high school or a math course um, to get in high school. There are a couple of um, our, our majors that recommend either data management or calculus, but same thing because they're recommended courses, you can still get into the program without them. So as an example, if you wanted to be an economics major um, like Ariane, that does recommend calculus. If you didn't take calculus in high school, we have a course you can take in first or second year to get you up to speed so you can still do that major. Um, so definitely still apply for those programs. Thank you so much, Sam. Hopefully that put a few minds at ease. I know most business programs at a lot of universities do require 
um, a math course. So our honors of team business and some of our other business programs are kind of unique in that regard, but we'll still give you the foundation that you need to be successful. Um, so thank you once again to Kelly and Sam and Alyssa and Arian and Darshan for joining us today. It was um, so great to, to hear about your experiences as students at Waterloo as well as to get some insights from our staff members. We really appreciate that. Um, just as we wrap up, I wanted to share a few reminders once again, letting our audience know that we've got some great events coming up, including our virtual campus tours and Waterloo virtual open house taking place on Saturday, October 30th. Um, you can also order brochures from our website, connect with us on our Beyond Ideas blogging site or our future students or sorry, undergraduate program site, uwaterloo.ca slash future, or send us an email to liaison at uwaterloo.ca and we are always happy to help. Uh, next week, we have got our next faculty feature, which is our faculty of health. So we're looking forward to sharing more with you on, uh, on that one. And um, I'm sure we'll hear from some great student and staff speakers once again. Um, but in the meantime, like we said, if you did miss responses to any of your questions, we're sorry for the technical difficulties working on getting those fixed for next week. But thank you for joining us. Um, send any emails that you have to liaison at uwaterloo.ca. And we can't wait to host you for our next Waterloo Wednesday webinar. Take care, everyone.